Why not? Why not? We're still on the board. Great question. Well, uh, the XPS itself is really the super state. Shop at the New York Public Library, um, Leroy Street. We have a website now, thanks to Stephanie. Um, and we are con we continue with um, small talk lessons um, every two weeks, but it's still a hack workshop and it's still whatever you want to do. So we can mix things up. We can do some Python. We can do some C plus plus. We can do some small talk. We can do whatever anybody wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. it, it's a big room. You can actually do two different things. You yeah. Two different groups. Of people. We have a lot of tables, a lot of chairs. We've got two hours a night. So come on down. Bring a laptop. Do whatever you want. You can do some small talk with us. You can do whatever you want. Or we can even just get together and just have a little fun. What's the URL for singing karaoke? Yeah. No, we <laughs> could. We could go afterwards and have some kind of fun. So what was that again? That site? Um, Hackdocnylon.com. Or, 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 sorry. It kind of might work, but I wouldn't count on it. No, I wouldn't actually do the dot com. We own that, but I don't think it's connected. So, uh, the address is 66 Leroy Street in New York. It's the Hudson Park branch of the New York Public Library. And closest train is the one Houston Street, just a couple blocks away. So, um, next meeting will be this Tuesday coming, which is the 22nd, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, next meeting, June 22nd, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Um, we have a guy coming in that teaches a small talk. Um, if you're interested, come on down. We'll tell you more about small talk. We bring materials, books, pencils, pens, laptops, whatever you want. We've got free wireless, too. So. It's fun. I'm enjoying the fun. It's the best kind of work. Yes, it's the best kind of fun. And back to Ron. So an extra round of applause for Stephanie because she's actually been working pretty hard on that website. <laughs> Any other announcements? Forrest, there's got to be something going on in your world. Well, um, if anyone is actually interested in Drupal, I'll be giving a talk at the NYPHP group also on Tuesday the 22nd called The Horrible Truth About Drupal. So I'll be exposing all the really, really icky things that other people using Drupal would never have known. You mean like a reporter for Rupert Murdoch? <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he, would, he would love to get this dirt. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna dish some serious dirt. We'll be in the post next week. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll be page six. <laughs> Anything else? Any word on when we're going to see uh, seven come out? Or? Um, no, actually, actually, we are um, original. Seven set July seventh um, was set as a midway point between the best case and the worst case projections, which were earlier uh, late, late spring to um, early mid fall. So it won't be out by seven seven, but uh, probably sometime in August. Just guessing at this point. Anything else? Um, I'm sure Unigroup is having something. Uh, they had some. They've had some pretty fantastic uh, talks lately. Uh, meeting tomorrow night. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for. Thank you for that. Really Intel cool. presenting their new uh, their server line or their server chips. I think. Oh jeez. Oh that's gonna. I know Intel speaking. I believe it's about their server chips. I can't get. I don't remember more details. Go to the Unigroup website if you want to go register tonight. So they can order the food in time. Uh, the usual disclaimer there is Unigroup group does charge. Uh, it is very expensive to just go to one meeting. You're better off just signing up and being covered for the whole year. 50 and, uh, for the whole year. And the money is for the food. The money covers the food yeah. out of all the meetings, which is awesome. Half buying half piece of windows with it, they're buying food. <laughs> oh, uh, earlier in the year, there was a strain in the ear issue that had boxing. I got very good news. It was picked as, wasn't it picked as a product of the year or something? Uh, it was, it was, there was one of several, they didn't pick any particular product, but it got 
the best reviews as far as flexibility. As far as I hear about they had issues. a lot. I had no idea they were in town though. <laughs> yeah, they had, they had issues Those themselves, but they said they work out. <laughs> but streaming media, which is not even a Linux magazine, likes them. So yeah, everybody it. seems to. We like that too, by the way. <laughs> You like streaming media magazine? Oh, well, I, I you know. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it just made his paycheck a little more stable. Somebody said it was. Anything else? Yeah, free software related or open source or okay. free culture? Here you go. I'm holding in hand the latest revision of the OLPC um, laptop. It was uh, it's now being used in uh, Paraguay. Um, and it's the new revamped version. Um, and we're interested in, in volunteering with uh, infrastructure, with, with programming software, and other kind of fun things, you know, culture wise. You know, just let me know or go on the website, laptop.org. Kevin, is there any way for other uh, Linux laptops to easily mesh with the um, OLPC uh, using, using its uh, innate um, machine abilities? Unfortunately, the 802.11s is not really. Uh, Available in anything other than the X01 laptop. Mm -hmm. So it's basically it. Unfortunately, no one else bothered to catch on with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can uh, collaborate with them using software and stick, which is an emulation software you can put on any PC, Mac, or Linux box, um, and use a regular local, local, local area network or other ways of collaborating with the unit itself, but mm -hmm. not with the mesh per se. Anyone else? Eric, what's going on with the puppet group? Yeah. Mm, nothing that I am aware of. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Anything else? All right, I just have one quick question. Does anyone here know SendMail? Uh, John has a question for you about that later, I guess. Send what? If you can pick your ear for a second, that would be really good. Uh, I guess then, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Rob Zecker on the Universe of the Oh, yes, with Box Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for having me, guys. Um, so, I just moved to New York two weeks ago uh, on Tuesday. Hey, everybody's like, hey, good luck. <laughs> Uh, like a lot of cookie dough right now, so good luck, buddy. But uh, uh, obviously, as a huge uh, Linux user, my first objective was to attend the local lug, and as it turns out, I can speak at it. So how's that for a local? Mm -hmm. I also got a terribly scratchy voice, and I'm guaranteed to go into a fit of coughing at least three times over the course of this presentation, so I apologize in advance. Before all that, I would like to introduce you to the living room. And it must be set free. The living room is the one room in the 21st century that has become the most important for every human being in their waking, non-working hours. We spend more time in the living room when we're not sleeping and when we're not working anywhere else, except for me, because I'm in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> oh, we had a couple people like, hey, buddy, yeah. busy getting a sandwich. <laughs> the average uh, American spends six hours and 47 minutes watching television every single day. If you multiply that out over the course of the year, that's 1,745 hours. I'll save you the trouble and long division and tell you every single month that means the average American is spending six full days, six complete 24-hour days, in that couch watching that screen. It's way more than, than any other, than their mobile device than any other screen uh, that they have access to that's not work for those. Can I ask you two questions about that? I don't want to oh, yeah. too many details, but... Um, is that an industry produced statistic and is that people that are actively watching television or people that are in a room with their televisions on? One of the reasons the question is we, we you know Nielsen and other you know metrics companies legendarily inflate things for the benefit of their clients. So I just wondered I just wondered if it, it, people like people question. literally sitting there watching TV and how, how reliable that is. It's great question. Totally ganked it off of Wikipedia and made sure to check the discussion page on that particular mm -hmm. statistic, of which there's a plenty of reading that you would like to do. The, uh, it's actually the um, uh, USDA who produces the statistic and they were trying to link it to child obesity. So I assume mm -hmm. that it has Who is a, it? Has it? USDA. USDA? Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time anyone has ever questioned that statistic ever, so that's awesome. Thank you. So the living room. We spend a lot of time there, but there's not a lot of open source technology there. But there is everywhere else. It's in the uh, data centers that are housing the information systems that are powering our everyday lives. It's uh, on our desktop where you and I apply our trade 
here on the bench that has the, uh, become the workbench of the uh, 21st century employee. It's uh, uh, on mobile devices, these weighted companion cubes that we cling to every day, the screens that we search at constantly. Only one person got the portal reference. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> And uh, uh, thanks to the uh, advent of smart grid technology, it's also in uh, approaching uh, 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 to be in every single uh, plug that you use to uh, power all these devices. So all the technology that we're using everywhere else, uh, in one form or, uh, or another, is, is open source. And I don't need to tell you it's changing everything. It's changed the way we buy things. It's changed the way we learn things, as demonstrated by the XO laptop. It's changed the way we talk about things, and it's changed fundamentally our relationships with each other. Open source has been the platform for innovation for the 21st century, but it's not in the living room, like at all. The only, there are only a couple devices that use Lynx on, most notably the TiVo, and what did it do? It changed everything. It invented a completely new type of device, PBR. The living room is very much the final frontier for open source. And, and why is that? Well, you take a look at your living room, and what do you see? You see monoliths, huge, <laughs> huge, gigantic, nice. opaque nice. devices that you uh, can't dare to open or you can't look at. They're large and they're looming and they have like very strange reflections on them. They're intended to look intimidating, like, please, do not open me. Do not fix me if I have a gigantic red ring. You have to send it in and get it back three weeks later. Now that is a good metaphor for the monolith. <laughs> About, it's about as functional. It's good. In fact, I find that the uh, hardware devices that I use to consume media in my uh, television, right, or in my living room, have, bec have become so so close and so proprietary that it's gotten to the point where they're more useful as warming appliances than they are for devices to enjoy my entertainment or consume my media. Rob, can I hate to burst your bubble halfway there, but the set-top box your friend is per was perched on mm -hmm. is indeed running Linux. Indeed, I'm glad you found that. It's yes, it is indeed running Linux, but the uh, software that you're that you're seeing is what you're going to is what you're going to notice here, meaning that the software that the only open devices that are out there are running are crappy. Abominable. Like so, so the few devices that are running Linux look like hell when you turn them on. Like you have this gigantic grid which you know has all this blue stuff and a whole ton of information. You get like this one sentence about Melanie Griffith that apparently is something about crazy in Alabama. And and the thing that's like most obtuse to me, this gigantic grid with time slots for shows indicating that I need to arrive at my couch at this particular time on this particular day in order to watch this thing. Now growing up on the internet, like this doesn't make any sense at all to me. Like, I'm used to everything being on demand. I'm used to showing up to this particular screen, seeing something that I want to watch, and watching it right away. All this stuff doesn't work for me. And why is that? Well, I think <laughs> we probably, probably have a good idea by taking a look at the people who are making the decisions about how these interfaces should be built. About the pe uh, If we take a look at the people who are responsible for what television looks like. And television, I mean, I'm sorry to say, it kind of looks like this. Can I say one thing that I made before you switch over? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's the gig? That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Big, big middle finger. I'm sure that's the first time he's got that in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they, these guys all, you know, look the same. They're white men in suits that are losing their hair, that are operating on these premises and all these assumptions it's that better. were born very much in the last century, that are 50 years old and are antiquated and that are not consumer friendly. So the question I would like to pose at this presentation to this particular audience is what if the people who are deciding what television looked like looked a little less like him and looked a little more like, I don't know, me? <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, looked like you. Uh, <laughs> should I still hang out? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you should still hang out. I, I would like to argue over the course of this presentation that a uh, interface that is open is fundamentally better than an interface that is closed. And as such, television is better produced by communities and consumers than it is by companies and management teams. Mm -hmm. So my name is Rob. I work at a company called Boxy. We're located here in New York City, down in Chelsea at 16th and 6th. Please feel free to stop by. 
I am the lead application developer and community evangelist, which means I'm the dork that gets to come to all the cool events while everyone else is hanging out with uh, Samsung marketing drones at some beer fest uh, downtown. It's a beautifully done out photo of your cat destroying a roll of toilet paper. How much did the cat get paid for it? How did they pay for it? What? How did the cat get paid for it? Yeah. Oh, this is all, all, all the images of Creative Commons, by the way. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about this talk is first give an introduction to Boxy, then talk about open source at Boxy, how we use it and how we get back, and then third, how you guys can get involved in getting more social open source software in the living room right now. First, let's talk a little bit about Boxy. Now, here's the audience participation part of our show. How many of you <laughs> folks have heard of Boxy? Say, in most of the room. Uh, except there are a couple people that I can tell <coughs> have heard of Boxy, but they're too cool to raise their hand. That's cool. That's cool. How many of you folks run Boxy? All right, all right. Significantly less. And how many of you folks are developers that have produced a Boxy app? Zero. Hey, Ralph's got a lot of work to do in this town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so describe a little bit about what Boxy is. Boxy is an open source social media center. Now we're going to take that from the back and work our way to the front. First piece is the media center. When I get home after a hard day at the hair salon, the last thing I want to do is <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to do is look at another uh, computer screen. <clears throat> so when I come home, I have four things that I want to watch. One is the Red Sox game. Two, <laughs> two is the Daily Show. Three is Colbert, and and four is uh, Family Guy. If it's uh, if a new episode is up on Hulu. So uh, a media center, a good media center, should allow you to do all those things. It should allow you to watch the latest. Uh, live sporting event. It should allow you to watch uh, uh, a daily informational program that's being broadcast on the web, and it should allow you to watch your uh, local video. So if I have, you know, the box set of Doctor Who specials that I just got, got for uh, for my birthday, nice. uh, I can uh, watch those on Boxy. Boxy is intended to be the true converged device. It runs your local media and it runs your online media. It shows all your TV shows and all your movies, whether they be local or whether they be online, in the same interface, in the same place, in the same 10 foot display that's easy for you to access and enjoy. Same thing goes for your music, same thing goes for your photos. All the uh, uh, media that you want to consume in your living room, Boxy Play. That's not terribly interesting. That kind of software has been around for a very, very long time. But what makes Boxy distinct from all those is its social functionality. Social makes a media center way more awesome. So uh, social means a lot of things in a lot of different places. Basically what it means for me is that my water cooler at the place where I work gets installed in my office and nobody has to come over and like run like mud all over my hardwood floors. Everybody talks about what they watched last night on TV once they get to work and then, uh, then they uh, exchange the Hulu links or the uh, or ComedyCentral.com links or what have you. Uh, uh, the next day, and then you go home, you take those links that you had, or you check your email, and then you plug it in, and then you watch it, uh, it's a call, it's come out. Well, with social networking, you can take everything from your social graph that your friends are watching and display it here, uh, uh, display it here right on your TV. So when you're uh, sitting there in your boxy interface, uh, very prominently displayed on the left-hand corner, and here it is uh, expanded, is your social feed. So you get recommendations and likes from your friends who are on Boxy, recommendations and likes from your friends who are on Facebook, and recommendations and likes from your friends who are on Twitter. You also work the friend feed and clicks a couple different others. So you can get uh, all the videos that are able to be played on Boxy uh, right here. What about the uh, two mobiles where you can uh, connect distribute your video to a whole bunch of networks at once. Are you in really contact with those people? I don't know, but it sounds like I should be. Two, two mobiles. How do you spell mobile? I'll check it out. Two mobiles. Oh, two mobiles. Oh, along, along, along the line, some of the mobile. Uh, something was just relaunched mobile? today. Mobile. I'm sorry? Something was just relaunched, uh, just relaunched today, uh, a German probably uh, cool. online TV recorder. Really? That's live again, and it's, it's still European centric, but it includes American programming and uh, English language. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. Online TV recorder. They should make a box again. So the only media that you're allowed to see on this thing is stuff that's posted IP-wise somewhere. There is no facility in a sense to interoperate with existing cable infrastructure or 
Uh, oh, is there anything that runs a over cable? Not yet. It's all IPTV based. Right? So it's all IP. It's all what? It's all IP based. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, but you said IPTV. So it doesn't function as like a DVR to record shows or anything. I'm sorry. It doesn't function as like a DVR to record shows. No, it doesn't. In fact, that's kind of antithetical to what we're trying to do. Like our idea, like like from an engineering standpoint, for me. The idea of DVR is, I mean, reprehensible. Right. Like, like you have the same copy of Lost in 60 million homes across the United States, mm -hmm. like the same bits in 60 million different places. Like, is that really necessary? I don't think so. If we can just send everybody to one place, one one web resource, and distribute it that way, then for CDN, I think it's all more efficient. I, I think that point is going to need to be addressed at some at some juncture, yeah. um, because the problem with having a single point for media is that it makes takedown notices really phenomenally easy and by distributing content the whole reason that, that things are in the internet has this huge memory is because you can't once it's out once it's on the internet it's on the internet it's copied it's copied and it's replicated, replicated. and in fact I, I, the, the technology that I'm working with is actually striving the exact opposite direction it's trying to find ways that we can distribute things so widely yet so efficiently that there is no single point of failure that a corporate trademark lawyer can come in and say, serve a takedown notice. And we, I can cite numerous examples of things that are amazing that I can, pages and pages of links and feeds and everybody's talking about it and it's gone. And, all, and everybody links back to that same piece of media and with one piece of media is gone. Uh, that is a drag. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 I think that point particular problem, problem is probably not going to be solved by us. But Wait, no, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you have to roll this into your mix because you don't have enough utensils on your kitchen. Uh, well, it should yet. be an issue but, you're aware of. But, but, it, but, I, but, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an interesting dynamic. So we're saying that basically the, that, the, uh, that there are only certain things that are stored on you itself, and at least the major things like the video and other content. You're basically streaming what's available, and people can refer to that. And on, and there was what that's stored on the box, what's the, what's streamed or, or, or you know. Whatever. That's a good question. Perhaps I was a little unclear. So the um, so the content that I'm talking about here is a mixture of everything that's available on the internet and everything that's available on your local machine. Oh. So your DVD collection, if you want to rip it into MK, MKV files. Put it on your local machine, absolutely do it. I've done it myself. My entire DVD library is located right here. So please don't anybody pour any water on this. this is <laughs> and it is displayed side by side with. Is Glee seriously up here? Yes. So <laughs> that... you guys didn't tell me? Like, why did that? I... Uh, this one I took from someone, else, but God, why couldn't it have been porn? That would have been a lot less. <laughs> that's, that's great. But, um, all your, all, all your TV shows, whether whether they're on Hulu or whether they're on ComedyCentral.com or whether they're on NBC or any of the other uh, different sources on Discovery.com, on the CW, on the WD. I don't know why you'd watch any shows on either of those two networks, but in the event that you do, or have a girlfriend that you need to impress, they're all here in the same place at the same time. Uh, it's uh, what's available locally uh, can that be made available to others, and if so, is that, is that use uh, a P2P, a mesh? Yeah. No, no, no. There's no, there's no okay. distribution between box and box. That's exactly what he's saying. He's saying. So you have a copy of your video that you shot from your from your front yard, or you know, something you need to put in your box. You can only see it. Yeah, you can only see it on your box. There's no, there's no network. Okay. Conceivably, could somebody create an app that you could save something that you want? On this uh, absolutely. I mean, the the, the application development platform is very, very large. I mean, you have a full Python interpreter there. Uh, to the other stuff on. Right, I'm so sure that's all the tools. I mean, I know plenty of people would love to archive this and that and the other thing. So. Mm. I'm sure. Yeah, it's, just nature, it's not the nature of the internet, it's the nature of In all honesty, the app may <laughs> exist and I don't know about it. It's it's the this, uh, is this at all similar to XBMC? It is very similar to XBMC. That's where our heritage comes from. That's right. Two of our core engineers came from the XBMC project. Foxy itself is a fork of XBMC. I have some more slides about that later on the presentation. And you guys are probably making it successful because XBMC has a problem. The later model Xboxes, original Xboxes, would, if you stuck a disc on it containing Linux, it would yawn and say, What the heck is this? Uh, uh, privacy. I'm just wondering, the last time I think I looked into this, I seem to recall it seems to, seemed to be sent, centered around uh, a login of some sort. Maybe I don't, maybe I mis, mistook something, at least I think, to download it. I'm just wondering, when, if you have these libraries, does that get shared or published with Foxy or someone? 
You only share it with your mom share. So uh, the social functionality they have in place requires you to pair your social uh, uh, features with the uh, with, with like you you have to pair your Twitter account to to your box account. I don't have that. And it's all opt-in. Okay, but if you want to watch content on Hulu or where, wherever, does Boxy get a con uh, copy of all things that you are browsing? I, I, I can't, I don't even know what we do. Okay, maybe I, maybe you I... You didn't answer the question. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is it that you have to log in or something to download a copy of Boxy? or used to. Okay. You used to. I, I haven't looked at this, and that's an that's an important distinction. You it used to have to must sign have been up. maybe six months ago or something that I, you know, saw something on Slashdot, went to the site, and it says you must log in to download this, and I kind of said, eh, the heck with that, forget about it. Indeed, and I think a lot of people did that, and we lost a lot of users that way, so we switched to a policy, so you can download and you can run Boxy without uh, completely anonymously without signing up for fan. I, I will have to double check about the uh, keep track of, of what people are watching because I think it's very important. If anyone can, I can imagine that we do it. We do keep track of the stuff that people share and stuff that people recommend. Right. But if you, you can download it freely, then I can't really see how short of it just an IP address you really do any so tracking. This is, this is relevant to your answer. Uh, Boxy is in several of the repositories for several different distributions. So right. That's so basically completely anonymous. And we love all of them. So yeah. So it's Lots. not. Right. You don't have to log that again. When there was the download thing, it gave me the impression that you know everything you did was tied to this account, and that just didn't. It's a fair concern in this day and age. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, I hear you. Think. I mean, I mean, people might find out that I watched it late. That would be horrifying. I think we just did. I think we just did. That'd be terrible. Crap. There goes my career in politics. You said you like to watch. Baseball. Does this have some interface? To I like, like to watch the Red Sox. MLB.tv. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so can you walk? So how do you do that through Boxy? Is There's an MLB.tv uh, app. In my opinion, it's the best way to watch baseball. This interface ever. is with MLB.tv. Oh my God, does it ever, dude? The, if you like watching baseball, watch it on Boxy. You'll never go back to anything else. It has your little calendar there. We can do a little demo. It's the best thing. Uh, call up Saber Metrics and everything, I suppose. I'm sorry. What? Call up Saber Saber Metrics and. So uh, uh, we actually have a, a, a really interesting uh, revision that's coming out soon. It's going to have box scores and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't make the Yankees lose, which mm -hmm. makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with that sort of thing, but uh, is that a page service you have to sign up for? The one with the red, red sign for over here? No, the MLB.tv is a paid service. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, 120 bucks for the year, right. something like that. 120 bucks for the year, you get 165 games. Uh, you get the, the postseason for free, and uh, so they have to there's like a, like a login or an account to the next. Yeah, yeah. When you log in uh, to Boxy, you just log into your MLB.tv account, and it just works. And I guess do you know other types of uh, of uh, uh, services that have the same feature? Logging on, Absolutely. There are a lot of content providers that are monetizing their content on Boxy through subscription, and we have a lot of plans to make that easier. I'm just wondering, if you're already paying for, since we're talking about baseball, yeah, 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 the Yes channel, channel. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I know a DVR concept is hypothetical, but let's say I wrote a Boxy app, I should just record those games and throw them Oh, you don't need to record the games on MLB.tv and watch all the old games. No, but let's say I don't want to. I don't want to pay the MLB.tv subscription because I already have the Yes channel on cable. Right? Oh, okay. You want I want to keep that. So, is it flexible enough? I can write a Boxy app to just copy the games in MPEG or whatever and play them back here. Uh, I, I don't believe there's any hardware that you can interface with directly from Boxy. I'm not sure if anybody's done any recording function. Oh, even even if I have the tuning card, I can't do that. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. What's going, what are the uh, ports going to be in the interface around the boxy boxes coming out? The boxy box is going to be HDMI, you get uh, uh, SD, and two USB well, back to back, back to your question. The, uh, um, do you have, is the, does the ability exist from the uh, development tools that are available to interact with a tutor card? Right. I'm, not, I, I'm definitely not sure, but give me your card and we, okay. uh, I'll be able to find out there. I, I, I want to say uh, I believe so because the, you know you have a full you, know, you have a full Python environment there. I'm just not sure if we, we have access to these file devices from within the interpreter that they come with the proxy. 
All right, I have a complicated three-part question. One, uh, Bring it. Really, Let's really, go. It's really Let's complicated. It. One, can you comment on the, the delay of the boxy box? Sure. I'm sorry. Okay. Excuse me. One, one second. Can you, can you comment on the delay of the boxy box? Can you um, explain whether there are any like, legal issues with getting the boxy box out? And what sort of... So, were there any like software issues getting the embedded environment working or anything like that? Okay, so the first question is, uh, can I comment on the boxy box coming out? Yeah. Yes, I can. We're terribly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? We want to come out as bad as you guys do. Yeah. And uh, we're especially sorry for the delay in the announcement. We just want to make sure that uh, the date that we give was the expected <coughs> right. And we are very, very confident that, that it's going to be right. Uh, the second piece is, did it have to do with the... Were, were there any legal issues? Or? Were there any legal issues? No. Uh, three, three software challenges. Five software software challenges. Cha oh, dude, there are tons of software. Like, like what? Like, like, we have so much awesome that we got to put in that little box. I mean, it's like, like no bigger so than how did, how did you do it? What? what how did we the fit the awesome in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big dudes with like big like levers. It was crazy. No, um, we did. Uh, we did want to take some uh, extra time to make sure that we got some features that we thought were critical. As we were finding out over the course of the year, a lot of our boxy users are very, very high end. They're folks that demand high performance. So we had to make sure that 1080p was working great when working in all circumstances and all containers. We also had to make sure that we were getting the audio right, the surround sound. So there were, no, there were a number of different uh, uh, pieces that we felt uh, over the course of the year uh, that became critical. So we need some extra time to make sure that those were. In part four, Josh wants to know does, it, does the box do MLB TV also? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all platforms on Boxy uh, do the uh, MLB TV, so Windows, Mac, Linux, and other What about uh, stuff like uh, Mirror TV channels and stuff like that? Hmm? Mirror TV? Mirror player? Uh, I want to say I've seen a Mirror app, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Mirror, mirror player. What's the question? No, can you pull in Mirror player stuff, which is based on, like, BitTorrent? Uh, well, I don't know that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. well, somebody here like, yeah. Boxy Box under kit. Okay. Uh, You're going to make Boxy Boxes. We partnered with uh, our hardware partners at D-Link for the Boxy Box. This will be the first hardware device that is officially supported by Boxy, and that's going to be coming out in November. Directly after that, there are going to be two more, and then next year it's going to be tons of TVs. Who's the first one? I didn't hear who the first one was going to be. The first one is the Boxy Box in November uh, by, with our hardware partner D-Link. D-Link. Okay. And directly following that, there's going to be quite a few more. So Which is a commercial is. package. This commercial organization that's either licensing this or working to transfer IP or support a uh, BSD license or something like that with commercial undertakings. How does this work? Is this like an Android commercial model? How does that work? Uh, that's an interesting question, probably for someone who's not a dork. But I'll try to take a <laughs> try to take a stab at building it. The license that we're distributing boxing under is GPL version two. And uh, the uh, hardware partners that we're working with are uh, largely in the uh, support capacity which we get some of the single I can argue that it's Google is. But uh, it's not, it's not so the revenue model that we have for Boxy is going to be primarily on servicing uh, consumers and content partners through the same platform. That's, that's where we're really focused on. That's where we're the biggest point. So you're involved in this commercial? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Boxy is a commercial company that is for profit, and we uh, fully anticipate that profit is going to be significant. At least I certainly hope so, because it came all the way up here to New York. <laughs> uh, uh, and we uh, uh, produce a uh, product called Boxy, which is itself a product of the open source project called Boxy. Does that make sense? It's a little convoluted, but that's, you know, that's open source. I think it's the organization around us. Uh, or organization, uh, including my hair, is 13. <laughs> because, so that's um, 11. <laughs> no, uh, 13 total. Uh, primary engineering is in Tel Aviv. Uh, headquarters is here in New York. And primary is in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Then we have one of uh, Well, primary engineering is in, in, is in Tel Aviv. Uh, the core uh, uh, business team and application development is here in New York. And then uh, we have uh, two folks out in San Francisco uh, in the in the front. Uh, at this point, you should tell them about the streaming media issue. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, hey, we're on uh, streaming media. Because it's relevant to exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back. You can yeah. see a nice picture. Five boxes are doing there. It was in February. It was released at what, SCS, whatever? Can you turn down the lights? Hello? Can I? I'll stream. Yeah, yeah. Am I that idiot? I love your hair. Yeah. Andrew. Hey, how's it going? With the, with the, uh, with the originally um, approaching aid of a touch screen and, and things, 
Um, the engine's going towards that direction. Have you Holy crap, is it ever? Okay. It's going to be awesome. We're, uh, we're working on uh, iPhone, iPad stuff right now, a lot of different touchscreen technologies. And what we have, I mean, right now, mm -hmm. it's going to blow your mind. Android as well? Android? Uh, there's an Android remote right now that's a, a community contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can uh, uh, control your proxy device directly from the phone. Uh, is there anything in relation to 3D now? Because I know NVIDIA released the 3D driver for their hard uh -huh. that works. Uh, well, uh, you know, everything's oh, everything that you see in boxy is generated by every wall. Uh, and on Windows, it's not a direct access. So I guess we're going to be, I, I don't think we're playing on any. And, oh, I just was going to ask what we're doing. Since you mentioned Linux and uh, Windows, um, OS X, I guess, is going to be using OpenCL or in Grand Central or no? Uh, I don't know what you're using. Is it using Grand Central or OpenCL? You'll probably make really good use, especially with the NVIDIA chip on the, on the Mac and E's. Same thing with most of the new Is there any telephony integration? I was just going to ask if, is there anything that you haven't included in it, so why not? You know, I'm really looking for a hair dryer peripheral myself. But, you know, I keep getting shot down product names. It's ridiculous. So let's get this on a glide path back to the end of the deck. The uh, social functionality is also push, meaning that in addition to receiving the recommendations and likes of your friends, you can also push those out to all your social networks. With one click of the button, there's a big heart that's on the uh, piece of media that you like. You hit, you click that you like it, and it pushes automatically to your Facebook and to your uh, Twitter feeds. Is there uh, a direct point-to-point uh, -point, uh, option like there is in Twitter? What do you mean? Just to one person as opposed to broadcasting? No, no, these are all broadcast features. But that's uh, interesting. There is a recommendation feature, but your friend has to be on Boxy. So you can recommend stuff directly for, uh, for your friends that are on Boxy that will receive a little message with your recommendation. But, uh, nothing that <coughs> integrates with any other. You can so. narrow cast it. Great question. And now the most fun part, talking a little bit about open source, which makes Boxy on your face awesome, as opposed to merely super awesome. Uh, Boxy is an open source project, as I uh, indicated to the gentleman's question earlier. It is uh, released on GPL version 2 license. And uh, it all comes from a family tradition of open source that uh, we uh, gained from XBMC. So Boxy itself is a social fork of XBMC. It's one of uh, many. Uh, 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 commercial ventures that are surrounded by the project. You have two of our core engineers and members of the team at XBMC. One of them is, uh, 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 sits on the XBMC board. And uh, 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 we inherit the, uh, not only the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the great interface and the, and the, and the, the great execution of the idea of XBMC, but we also inherit the open source culture as well. We're fundamentally an open source company. Boxy is fundamentally an open source product and it's intended to be uh, the first real open source front end software solution to deliver. And we get a lot of stuff with that. By being open source, we have access to a crap load of containers and code yes. uh, containers and codecs. Uh, really, anything that you want to run on Boxy, I haven't really found a codec that we don't support yet. As a matter of fact, we even support zip and RAR files. So if your media is in a zip or a RAR file, it can play on Boxy without having to extract it. How cool is that? What? FLV? Absolutely, FLV. I, I think it's right there. Hell, oh, he even plays FLI and FLC files. Those are ancient. Ancient. They are old. They are ancient. You got those old Dodgians you see for cutscenes. <laughs> right on. I wonder what those were. <laughs> <laughs> you know what half the battle. Cinepack. <laughs> Uh, uh, H.264, yes. DivX, uh, will play uh, real video, uh, WMV, a uh, ton of different image formats, a ton of different subtitle formats. Now, this is a real pain to bunch get working, but it uh, all runs in. It's uh, as a result of a lot of the open source libraries. That Doesn't that create a lot of internationality cool? with the subtitle format? Does it ever? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the idea? Yes, absolutely. Oh, quick question, because I mentioned, um, you mentioned that you have, oh, there it is. MKB. I was going to say, you have Matroska, you mentioned it, and I didn't see it first. Okay. Uh, this talk will be available online for anyone who really wants to nerd out over all the containers. <laughs> 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 you can find the list on the internet. Getting back to that question over here before, what about um, uh, video files, media files that have been recorded on HTPC, they're still out there, um, that uh, now that it's local, mm -hmm. will that be able to be transposed into a boxing bar? Uh, so if you have a file that's... I mean, that, that address is just a question about interfacing with the tuner. 
albeit with one layer in between. Okay, so if, for example, you have like a MFTV box running on your local network and it's storing stuff in a particular directory, there's an SMB client that's built into Boxy. It can, you know, just share that that particular uh, directory. You can link them up, works like that. Like magic, there's okay. pixie dust and everything. It's great. So I have a question. Do you have, um, can you characterize the minimum hardware requirements for a Boxy? In other words, what, do you have to know what the box that's going out as Boxy is equipped like? Okay, the uh, Boxy box itself is uh, running kind of a kind of new hardware stack, but in terms of what you would like to what you would like to build, oh, the commercial version. Oh, the commercial version. Uh, it's hardware. Um, it's also that. ARM, Intel, Nvidia, proprietary. Tegra uh, two. Tegra two. Uh, Nvidia. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nvidia. There you go. So that would be you could eventually do 3D with the new drivers. Like that. Cost is going to be under two hundred dollars for the box. Probably one ninety nine. Just kidding. Yay! Yeah. So, so two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. You get full HD video. You get full surround sound. An ADP. Ten ADP. Yes. Switchable resolution, or is it fixed and then you scale it? I don't think we know yet. Does it play um, VCD, DVD, like directly Blu-ray? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. If you have an optical drive, there's a DVD player that's built in that will also play it. Well, it seems like you really have it all covered, and saying you got everything up to, including the 3D. But um, I just have one question for you. Wait, huh? oh. Cisco holographic format. You know, yes. someone was going to ask that today. Yes. And I came up prepared. I'm sorry to say, Cisco holographic format. You do not support. We look forward uh, to that. We look forward to digital play. <laughs> if you want to get really obscure. <laughs> maybe one day. Cisco what? Maybe one day. Support. Maybe one day. Hey, great community contribution. Um, uh, right, right, right now. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> In addition to this crazy support for different containers and codecs, which I'm, I'm super stoked you guys are excited about. But honestly, like no one else gets excited about that stuff right now. So that's. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, platforms. Uh, the support for the Apple TV is actually a community contribution. It's a member of the community uh, uh, saw this particular device, thought it would be excellent for running Boxy, so it was running x86 hardware and just figured out how to make it work. Fan, fantastic community contribution. In addition to that, we are also on the iPhone and we are on the Android with our remotes. So if you would like to control your box box with just your phone, believe me, chicks are impressed by that. <laughs> it is super cool, and that's all a community company. That's why geeks get all the girls. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that's true, but <laughs> 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 at least that has been my experience, Bob. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, the biggest contribution I feel and uh, what's my role at uh, Boxy to evangelize is the apps. Uh, we have a fantastic app platform on Boxy and a number of uh, super apps that are available. Uh, what initially got me turned on to Boxy in the first place, I went to their event in San Francisco, uh, saw the potential for the technology, uh, really believed in the vision, so started, thought like any other open source project, I'd take a crack at hacking on it and see what I came up with. Came up with a little app called uh, AutoTune the News. Freaking blew up. My Twitter blew up with a whole ton of people who wanted updates or had bug fixes. So I figured I was onto something and I released an app for a site called Failblog. And uh, that also blew up and was, was really popular. If you are looking to spend an afternoon and touch millions of people, like the Poxy app platform is perfect for it. These people are very, very much content star. I'd love to see new content. Just quickly, what do those two apps do, or the AutoTune app, or whatever? What is oh, so AutoTune the news are these. Uh, I, know, I know what the shows are. Oh, okay. The, well, the site and the show, but you what can is the uh, app? watch it on Boxy. And is, are they both free? And uh, they're and both free. Yes. And if, 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 is there plan to be non-free apps or just free apps? Uh, there are non-free apps already. Mm -hmm. So there are already people who are who are mm -hmm. like uh, MLB, Country Roll, mm -hmm. yeah. Suicide Girls, uh, a couple others yeah. that are uh, that are bringing their own. Uh, uh, what are the apps you should written? Oh, oh, let's, oh, let's give it Let's give it so, so when you buy MLB, is that bought through the Boxy platform? No, it's purchased on MLB.tv. Just okay. use the same username and password that you'd use for your iPhone, yeah. for your laptop, right. or any of the other places that you have MLB. It's kind of the, the future visions you have in your famous platform. Famous hey, platform. It's coming out in July. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> Okay. It's coming out in July. Uh, we're going to launch with a subscription-only model. We've got a bunch of really cool launch partners lined up for it, and uh, I think 
for me, uh, that's that's where the biggest potential for for the platform lies. What? Is that being okay. So not on demand. Okay. It'll be subscription. No, it'll be subscription, but it'll absolutely be on demand. You will subscribe for a particular show or a particular production house or, or what have you, okay. and uh, you'll have access. Like, like, could you yeah. purchase a particular? Uh, Program like I don't want a subscription. I just want that show, that movie, whatever. Kind of buy one. But we're not launching with Microtram, but we're going to follow it up soon. By and by soon, I don't mean whatever. What about um, advertising driven model? Advertising driven model would be great. We're going to get subscription. We're going to get the payments platform up first. Is your company in MPEG LA licensed? I'm sorry. Is your company licensed from MPEG LA? MPEG LA. I mean, do you have an MPEG LA license? I, I, I think so. I think there was a meeting about that uh, this week, so I assume so. I so you did pay them? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> are you going to be. A dork, dude. Do you think they put to the money? Seriously? <laughs> uh, are you going to add VP8 and WebM? I'm sorry? VP8 and WebM. We're not on your list. I'm not sure. It's going to be on Google well. just recently released, basically after the whole. Um, Oh, the, uh, what is it? The, uh, the alleged HTML5 thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 symbiotic relationship with us and XBMC. Um, this is not um, one of the things that was important for me coming to the log is to uh, highlight the contributions that we do make back to the community. So the DirectX uh, 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 port of XBMC uh, on Windows is uh, all uh, boxing employees, as well as the Linux port of XBMC, countless numbers of bugs. We still have two people that are actively working on the project. If you create content, is there a uh, a means to creating a channel on Boxy? Crap, yes, yeah, so you make an application, buddy. It's just make an application. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's your channel. Yep. Okay. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I was just like, we can come back to you later. Yeah. That's just like, yeah, something like this. So, um, basically, the model for this thing is a little bit like an icon, in a sense. The ecosystem around this thing is going to be kind of a hybrid between. Like a subscriber TV model and or an iPhone, you get the, people take them up, and apps are put out there, and the apps sort of syndicate particular content. The apps are really not that different from each other. The visual elements are the same, the transfer is the same, lighting and sound are the same. But um, it's sort of a way to aggregate portals in a very cheap way. Well, um, the, the only two the only two uh, Issues I would take with that analogy are the uh, comparison to uh, Apple's iPhone ecosystem and uh, the cheap part. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that we are going to be the antithesis of the uh, iTunes app store. So this is not going to be a monolithic thing. Like, like when you submit apps to Boxy, it's very... I, think I, I appreciate your point. My point is that in the sense of the licensing, but in terms of the sort of value proposition, everybody has one of these things. There's lots of cheap ways to sort of sign up for an app and get content that's now disseminated instead of through the TV and the latencies and the cost there, IP-based. Mm -hmm. And that's facilitated through the relatively simple apps that people can then throw together as easily as they throw together um, iPhone TV apps or channel apps. Yeah, or actually or way easier than iPhone. Mm -hmm. But yes, the, the, the idea of uh, an app ecosystem is being picked up by a lot of people. Samsung uh, announced over at CES their entire app platform to create an app platform that works on TV, works on mobile, and works on uh, their, their PCs. So um, a lot of people are going this way. We're certainly going to be fitting that model as well. But uh, my hope is that at least we uh, keep a lot of that open source culture. Okay, now I'm going to my question. Awesome. Uh, okay. What's the code base for Boxy primarily? Mm -hmm. And is there a way of just grabbing like a repository so you can like float around and mess around with it on your own platform? You're already so, going to okay. fork it? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. A lot of people have. So, do it up. It's cool. So, uh, um, what's the primary code base? Okay, so the code is uh, all C and C++ uh, for, for different parts. You can download the source code on our website. Uh, much to my strong objection, there's not an SDN uh, repo that you can just check out right now. You have to download the source and, and download the result. But um, the source is freely available, and it's GPL version 2, so you can do whatever you can do with GPL version 2. 
Um, you have uh, build instructions for all platforms across, like anywhere? Yep, readme dot whatever you want. And the main language is the main page application. Let's get to that, folks. <laughs> I had a Spider-Man analogy here. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so the uh, uh, invitation I'd like to make to you folks is to help us bring social open source software to the living room for the first time. We want you. We want you specifically, you Linux users, you open source enthusiasts. And the ways that you can do that are myriad. Uh, first way is to use Boxy. That's really, really super duper easy right now. Now, obviously, we uh, had a bit of a slip with our uh, first hardware offering. Uh, and uh, it's not going to be out there in November. But as we say at Boxy, uh, Q4 is the new Q2. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, if you want Boxy right now on your machine, it's super easy to make that happen. All you have to do is buy a number of the uh, HTPCs that are out there, or you can go ahead and build one yourself. I'll go over a couple of those options. Acer Revo, awesome little device. It's a little underpowered, but it's super cheap. I think it's $125. Uh, it comes with uh, four USB ports on the back, Ethernet, has Wi-Fi built in, and a VGA plug. Obviously, this is not the choice for the uh, hardcore high-def enthusiast, but it's awesome and it runs boxes great. Uh, Asus has the uh, it's a triple E model that's desktop based. They have a number of different options uh, depending on your uh, 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 demands for performance. They start, I think, at 100 bones and go all the way up to uh, 500. Have different storage and configuration options and uh, graphic options as well. Uh, the triple APC that has the NVIDIA 9300 card, absolutely great to run a bunch of them. Uh, hi, two thumbs up. And then uh, Apple, last week, uh, announced uh, the revision of the Mac Mini. And this device is going to be awesome for running Boxy. Um, <coughs> that is skinny. Yeah, it's super skinny. It uh, looks very sleek. I love the HDMI port on the back. And if it's the same like, like depth of a uh, Apple TV, uh, it's guaranteed to be a, a huge favorite for running Boxy Box. It's also uh, $800, but... <laughs> that actually looks even thinner than the Apple TV does. It does, it does look... Uh, I, I can't imagine it would be thinner than that. It looks like a little bit of a box. And the, uh, the AC converter is internal. I'm sorry? The AC converter is internal. No, no to the uh, Apple? To the Mac uh, uh, Is it? Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. What it's box is that? Uh, this is the uh, new Mac Mini. I thought the Mac, I thought it had more ports on the back, or is that a That's color? not even it. This is a oh, it's sorry, sorry, it's just an nonsensical. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. album. So I am, I'm running XBMC on a Dell Studio Hybrid. Awesome, well done. And it has HDMI on the back. Cool. It costs like 400 bucks. Oh, that is good. Core 2 Duo. Why not? Works great. Dude, you should install Boxy, I hear it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I looked, I just SVN checked out and Ah, I see. Yes, we can check that. You know, I started. Oh, we have SVN checked out. No, 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 no SVN. Oh, you know, it was like a Wikimedia. Uh, I'm sorry, a Wikipedia Media Center was like listing them all, and they were like, well, the most active is the XBMC. Is uh, is probably the second most active at this point. Yeah, maybe they were wrong. Like it's a it, like XBMC is awesome. There's some skins out there that are mind blowing. I think some of the best best TV interface design. Is, that is happening, I think, is, is with the XBMC project. I mean, that's cutting edge stuff there, I think. But for this audience, all that sucks. Why would you want to buy your own box when you can build your own? So here is an example of the Juke Boxy Box. It is uh, made by uh, one of our QA guys in uh, Israel, and it is to scale five times the size of the regular Boxy Box. So it's about as tall as one of his kids who it's uh, designed for. <laughs> Great. On the inside, you have a very hastily put together PC uh, with some very poor wire management on that. Uh, but it uh, runs uh, Boxy Fantastic, runs uh, Ubuntu on it, has a built in screen, uh, uh, touch screen for the kids to use. To, uh, to I mentioned it keeps running around that, though. Yeah, mm. yeah I think it's a disaster when it happens. But hey, <laughs> appreciate the enthusiasm. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, another option is to uh, go ahead and build your own box. I highly recommend the mini ITX platform uh, for uh, building your own box and box. I put this box together for uh, $630. It's running desktop hardware. It's very, very beefy. Uh, you can probably put together the same machine uh, for about $400 if you chose like an atom processor or something a little more underpowered. But uh, I like more power. What is it? Uh, this is what I affectionately refer to as the Gonzi box. So this is the box and box that I built for myself. Oh, it is the uh, uh, i7 processor, uh, Zotac uh, uh, Mini ITX board, uh, 4 gig of uh, uh, Blackline Mushroom RAM, 
and uh, it's got a uh, uh, integrated uh, NVIDIA 9300 uh, GT and a uh, 1.5 terabyte hard drive. Uh, the proxy environment is how we want to most of the code there, but I think the bandwidth processors will get them along. I I can't speak to running models that we have in place for the type of device. So that's a, that's a great question. I'm more front end developers, so I'm not sure what they have to do. But um, uh, I'll give you my card. You can shoot me an email. I'd love to find that out there. What OS are you running there? Oh, this? A bunch of. It's running Lucy. Do you have any optimization real time kernel to be able to throw latencies away for doing a media platform, or it's a vanilla kernel? No, uh, um, yeah, it's a vanilla kernel. Uh, so it's not really a media platform. Uh, it's just running Ruby on the Ruby OS. Yeah, it's just running Ruby on the Ruby OS. Yeah, it's running Ruby on the Ruby OS. Yeah, it's running Ruby on the Ruby OS. Yeah, it's running Ruby on the Ruby OS. There are things you can do in terms of tuning a piece of kernel code to give it lower latencies for things like video environments. And I'm just curious if you guys have that in there, or is it a stock off the shelf uh, kernel that works? I want to say, say there was some customization to uh, the kernel that we're going to do for the new class of boxes. I'm not sure what those are, and they're not required to run the uh, uh, package that you install for those boxes. The reason I'm talking about real time stuff is more has to do with like. Uh, Audio and video production. Video <coughs> production out there distribution. Yeah, I've seen the stuff on like the other actually so like um, in the Blender. Yeah, Ubuntu Studio has real time. <coughs> <coughs> I, I, I don't believe that. You, you certainly don't need that to run boxes. Okay. That's, and, uh, that's uh, real. There thing. may be some of those optimizations like box blocks or other commercial implementations. I don't know. What was this starting to give out? Uh, second thing you can do, reporting bugs. Uh, I strongly believe that bug reporting is the single greatest way you can contribute to any open source project. A, uh, um, a problem well described is a problem half solved, I always say. <coughs> so, if you use Boxy and you install it and you find something wrong, write a bug to you. And finally, you can build a Boxy app. Uh, there are 371 uh, applications currently on Boxy. Lion's share of those are uh, contributed by the community or the content providers that are represented in the apps. Clicker, they made. LibTV, they made. Uh, eGuiders made their own. Uh, we made Revision, we made Pandora. NPR made their own. And uh, 4TV as well. Uh, I have a question. If you make an app for platform, is that inherently open source? I'm sorry? Is the app that somebody makes open source as well? Is it viral? The code's G, the code's is, GPL is the code too. that these people make the apps for viral or not? Oh, um, well, the platform is based on GPL version 2. Yes. If you have code that's proprietary, you have to ship it in the binary. And it has to uh, associate So some of this is binary, some of it's not. Uh, it, I, don't, I don't know of any apps on here that are shipping with the binary. Communicating over the pods or whatever. No, but I'm, I mean, saying, I'm saying some of this would be open source, so other people could look at the code and say, "Oh, this is how they created the application." Absolutely, so it's a dependent. And program. I can create my own application, kind of based on what they've done. I would say most of them. Are. Most of them. Are. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's GPL version two, right. so there are gymnastics that you can do to get around that. Obviously. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Yes, those gymnastics are available. I don't know of any apps that are using. <coughs> Well, actually, I was going to ask um, if all 371 <coughs> apps are in fact channel apps, meaning that they're an application that subscribes you to a channel, or if anyone is actually building any apps that extend functionality in social ways, because that's traditionally what we think of as apps, as we think of yeah, totally. creative things of bringing multiple points together in a new way. <coughs> um, whereas these, I'm just wondering if all 371 are channel apps? No, no, absolutely not. There oh, are some uh, apps that uh, have great functionality in there. There's a Twitter client. Uh, there's a great app that uh, I built called uh, uh, ClickSet that interacts with a, uh, a uh, social website uh, called ClickSet that's focused around real-time conversation. So that, for example, you would like to chat with everyone on Boxing who's watching the Daily Show at the same time that you are. You have that available and it's overlaid on a unique interface. How do you spell it? Uh, ClickSet. C-L-I-Q-S-E-T. Okay, okay. C-L-I-Q. How do you spell it? <coughs> So there are quite a few happening. More mashups are happening as the uh, platform becomes popular. Lion share of content apps. 
Um, but as I like to say, widgets suck, apps rule, and mm -hmm. we definitely encourage more apps. So there was a question about resolution earlier. I wanted to learn more about that. So as a user, you're aggregating content from different places, different quality, different resolutions. How does Boxy deal with that in, in any sort of playback format that's standardized or? Oh, it's a great question. Um, the uh, uh, Flash Player itself uh, upscales. Okay. Um, sometimes some videos are better than other, right. uh, uh, others on that. And uh, for the rest, um, it just uses a, a FFM rate to you know, try to try to transcribe what's available into the resolution. So it's based on FFM rate. Uh, a FFM. lot, a lot of the, a lot of the container and codecs so that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering what type of. Um, what type of server configuration would you recommend for someone who wanted to start their own channel? Like, let's say, just for example, um, like <coughs> is being taped right now. Let's say if this group wanted to start the Linux channel. Someone could code an app, go go there on Boxy, and then we would have to have another server where we have to put all of the uh, all of the tapes of the various shows mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. What type of hardware would you recommend? Or something like that, and with something like that, would you use like would that connect to an Apache web server, or is there some what exactly does that does that oh. app uh, hook up to? How do you have to contact the, to the hardware? Great question. Um, so uh, what I would I don't think I have anything on the RSS right now. Uh, but I, I mean obviously I recommend publishing it on the web. We have a number of different options. You can give us a link directly to the file, and uh, we will we'll stream it from that location. Or you can put up your own Flash Player, and with our uh, built-in browser, we will go to a page with that particular Flash Player and make play. We have a whole set of JavaScript tools that allow you to manipulate that Flash Player from within Boxy, so you can start, stop, uh, increase, decrease the volume, the scrubber bar, stuff like that. I see. So in other words, most of these apps, when you see like the movies, that sort of stuff, most of them are playing like a flash based. Uh, some of them are. Some of them are. Like, like uh, there are a lot of flash apps, uh, or there are a lot of applications that deliver flash based content on Boxy. Um, I think most of the popular ones do, like um, uh, MLB, for example. Um, uh, but there are some that use Silverlight Zooms or Silverlight players as well, like Netflix, obviously. Yeah. Because, uh, How about Amazon's uh, service? Uh, what used to be called Unbox, I don't know too oh, much about it, but... Video uh, yeah, yeah, the video service. I know we have an app at some stage of development. I, I have no idea of what... Yeah. I look, you know, um, all these discussions at times about, you know, replacing TV and stuff, and one candidate shows up and there's, you know, like, having decent, affordable content as Amazon. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know anyone at Amazon, I would like to get, you know, my card. I'll be awesome. down no, no. No, um, uh, I think uh, at some stage we were in, in talks with Amazon about having their content on there. I have no idea what the status of those talks are. But we love their content. With, I love their service. And uh, they definitely belong on something like Boxy. Never used it before, but it seemed interesting. It's cool. It's really good. Yeah, so this content streams, uh, streams to the web, uh, and HTML5, flash, all that stuff. Uh, even Flickr now has a HTML5 player and beta. Right. Do you support that streaming also for Boxy? Um, HTML5, I'm not sure if it works out of the Boxy or not, but we have huge plans around HTML5 and we intend to pull this through. If we don't do it now, it's going to be soon. Does the, uh, does that Netflix app uh, support Linux? Can everyone no, it doesn't. Linux? Sorry? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Is there any, any idea on when that might be available? Yeah. <coughs> as soon as they release their draconian grip on Simple <laughs> platform? So never? Uh, I think you should go on to Get Satisfaction, go on to Boxy, and uh, add your voice to the one of you know, many thousand that currently suggest that they should run behind Netflix and Linux. I don't know when that's going to happen. That's uh, more of a business issue than it's a technology issue, uh, as is you know, most of the case with a lot of these kinds of things. Well, the first thing we're running uh, Silverlight in a virtual machine, you know, XP in a virtual machine, you can Silverlight, and get next to it. That's about the only way of doing it yeah. right now. Ours is through a Wii. Uh, you know, do do yeah. yeah, but that looks like hell. Actually, it must be good on Wii. No, 480p. Rob cannot live with 480p. I get that in there. At 480p, like the, the Star Wars prequels look good. Like, you can't have that. How many people are using this just on a computer versus like a customer? 1.2 million currently. 
I mean, I was, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was half the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's um, go on to the next Break that up okay. between just people that watch it on the computer screen versus their, their screen. You know, I don't think we have concrete statistics on, mm -hmm. on that disparity. Uh -huh. um, you know, we're a startup. We don't have a ton of money to spend on all of these stuff like that. But um, I, 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 I got to believe that it's the launch here. Most of the bugs that we have mm -hmm. uh, include uh, uh, reports of the TV that they're using. So if you use that as kind of a barometer for okay. what the user base is looking like, I'd have to say you know, the bottom share. Uh, concrete number. A scientific number I can't give you. I want to say it's like 8 or something. When you think about um, some of the other, there's a lot of buzz around Google TV, and mm -hmm. you got Pop Bots, Roku, and, I mean, uh -huh. can you kind of compare and contrast what the Boxy Fox offers? That's different, and kind of what's stopping other platforms from having a Boxy app on them? Um, mm -hmm. Time. Well, uh, I think I think every TV platform should have a Boxy app on it. Okay. Yeah, Boxy should be available on every hardware or TV platform. That's certainly how they want to be uh, a conversion interface that shows up on every single device, every screen that you want to consume media on. Mm -hmm. but that's uh, that's a long long ways on one. In terms of comparing and contrasting Boxy against a number of other you know competitors and stuff like that, I honestly I'm not qualified to do that because you know I, I don't know what all those other ones do. I will say uh, on a to get to the heart of your question is, why do I think we will win? Is I believe that if we do open source, social, and media center better than everyone else, we will win. And uh, no one I've seen does all three of those. Um, I just kind of mentioned before that, um, how do you get access to uh, uh, TV data? I guess, from, you know, from, um, and from various channels and whatnot. So the, the, the data on the shows that we have for saying uh, usually come uh, through uh, RSS feeds, through MRSS and the Yahoo standard. And that's, uh, that's what we're talking about. Do, do we get like what time the show is playing and stuff like that? No, of course not, because you don't need it. You know, you're still the same play. Actually, one's the comment, the other one's the question. First, the comment. Are you guys awesome. aware that the Roku player that Netflix aimed for is actually running embedded Linux? And they probably have some. <coughs> embedded DRM device on there. More than likely, <coughs> unfortunately. 